Hello, everybody. This is the Crouch Jump Podcast. I'm your host, Jay, and joining me, as always, the man, the myth, the legend, Rob. Hey. And also joining me this week is Jesse. What's up, guys? So, let's get into some housekeeping here. Uh, this is going to be our... I don't know if it's going to be our last podcast for the year. I don't think so. I don't remember how many weeks are left, but it is our last podcast uh, until Christmas is over because I'm not going to be here next week. I'm assuming Rob, like all you guys probably won't be here either. No, I will. I'll continue doing it. Yeah, I'll be here too. Oh, uh, you'll. All right. Well, either way. So we're kicking <laughs> I will not be out of the podcast because <laughs> this guy's yeah, got I guess family I'm gone. <laughs> and holidays and vacations and all that weird shit. That's probably not a so good idea. So there may you or see may how not. We handled the podcast, Rob. Yeah. We fucking. <laughs> I thought you guys did great. Do we slow? Did you listen to it? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of skipped through it, but. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be my last one, possibly for the year. We'll see, because I'm sure, I'm sure I won't be doing a whole lot for New Year's, and so see you guys in 2020. But. We also have some D&D goodness to keep you guys going, because I think we still have a couple more videos of that to churn out, right, Rob? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we'll, we'll, sure. we definitely have at least three more weeks <laughs> worth, three more Sundays worth of, uh, of D&D videos. Maybe a fourth one. I gotta see what I can do with the with their most recent footage that we have. Um, oh, yeah. We're not doing D&D yeah, this Friday, are we? We are not. I don't believe so because okay. a couple of people can't make it. So all right, um, but yeah, we have at least three weeks worth, and I think that's probably enough. Let me let me look at the calendar here. So what Sunday twenty second, Sunday twenty ninth, and yeah, we we will be good. All right. I didn't, yeah. I, that, wow, we're almost done with December. That's kind of scary. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. That's why I was like, oh shit, this might actually be one of our. Uh, last ones of the year unless you guys do it next week but i guess we'll have to wait and find out but in the meantime what have you guys been playing rob we'll start with you um i beat jedi the fallen order so i, I damn you that. beat it yeah dude it was, it was really really freaking good actually i very much enjoyed it um i think it, i think one of the things that uh, one of the things that like makes dark souls so special uh, and the Soul series in general is that they have a they have a huge variety of enemies throughout the game, and Star Wars doesn't. I mean, it has a variety, but not to the extent that you would hope. But I mean, at the same time, there's only I guess there's only so much you can do with Star Wars, and it was yeah, definitely I mean, it was definitely in, it's all stormtroopers and then a couple creatures, right? Basically, yeah. Um, I mean, it does get creative sometimes, but I felt like there could have been a more variety of creatures or at least kind of boss like creatures because some of the bosses were really just kind of like reskinned stronger versions of like mini bosses so um uh -huh. but i mean that that's really just a small gripe overall it's definitely like a very good game and it's worth 60 dollars all the way um but no i've been playing that typical tft in rocket league um of course I don't... Anything new? Anything new on Game Pass that you picking up? Or mm, I don't think so. Oh, Halo Reach! I've been playing some. We've been playing some Halo Reach. Um, well, yeah. I'm Halo just waiting Reach. for custom games to get uh, those servers so we can actually Finally play with people. I might. I. I mean, I'm. I'm half tempted to go online, and I'm sure there's like a community or a website somewhere or a Reddit uh, that recruits people to, you know, become friends and play custom games together. So. Yeah. I'm tempted to do that. Which that would be a ton of fun. That's that would be a ton of fun. Uh, I'm sure there's even like a Discord. Even I know you don't really care too much for Discord, but I'm sure you could probably find a Discord full of Halo players or something. Probably could, yeah. Well, I think uh, they still have. Uh, or Microsoft has that LFG feature even on PC. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I never used it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you talking about like the Xbox thing? Yeah. Uh, the looking yeah. For the group. Yeah, I've never used that either. <laughs> so maybe maybe we'll give that a shot. I don't know. I don't know if it's out here on the, the Xbox beta app, but 
I guess we can always find out. Uh, what about you, Jesse? What have you been playing? Um, honestly, I've been playing a lot of Halo Reach. Um, that was oh man, yeah, that was one game I sank so much time in. Uh, so, so time Hell yeah, on the Xbox, uh, three sixty. Same. And uh, I I tell you, man, getting used to playing Halo with a mouse and keyboard is a big oof. Um, yeah, I've even attempted. Yeah, I've been using my Xbox 360 yeah. wired controller up on my computer. Yeah, I didn't like how it felt, so I did the same. Uh, honestly, like I've gotten used to it. Uh, there's, it, you definitely have to tweak the settings. Um, but like, I, I haven't noticed any like input lag or anything like that. But uh, I've actually been having fun. Haven't been doing as bad as I thought I would be, but uh, not as good as I would like well, to be good. either. But, yeah, just been playing a lot of yeah. Reach and um, going back to uh, to Modern Warfare, especially as they uh, add new maps and stuff. So nice, the new Modern Warfare, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, the new Modern Warfare. They just added cool. um, today. They just added Shipment, which is a classic uh, map that oh, was yeah. all the way back in COD Four, and also yeah, I love Shipment. Um, can't remember the name of it. It was the one where you're like in a in like an office building, pretty much with like a shipping area. Um, you know, I would have been able to tell you had to, had I not. Is that what is that one of the ones from Modern Warfare Two that I'm thinking of, or is it a brand new map? Uh, no, they're both from uh, COD Four, and I think. Oh, they're from COD Four. Oh, weird. Yeah, and I think I they were even uh, released as one of the map pack maps in Modern Warfare 2, but they were originally on uh, COD 4. Mm. So. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I've been wanting to get on COD. Uh, both of my brothers play it, and uh, we, even though, like, everyone always shits on COD, that's, like, our thing that we do is we play, like, all of us get together and play COD, but switching jobs and everything this year, I just couldn't afford to... Uh, and there was also with the just sheer amount of games coming out, I just couldn't afford too many games and I had to cut Call of Duty out but a lot of the times I, I play Call of Duty with my brothers and it's kind of like a year, yearly thing that we do um, but I haven't played this one yet so oh, yeah. I, only the beta a little bit. This one is definitely um, definitely polarizing either you love it or you hate it but I'm playing it and I'm having a lot of fun so well that's good uh, I ha am playing Death Stranding still, still just kind of putting in a little time there. Um, I recently replayed through all of The Last of Us, just watching all the trailers and everything for Last of Us 2, just like made me really, really want to go back. Mm -hmm. um, especially since my girlfriend has never seen anything about the game before. And when The Last of Us 2 trailer came out and I was like freaking out, she was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, you don't even know. I'll have to show you. <laughs> and play the shit out of it so uh i recently finished that the other day and it is uh it still holds up it truly still holds up so uh that's really about it besides that yeah halo reach and of course tft with all the new heroes they're adding they're adding all this new shit to tft all the damn time uh and i think we even just got a new hero hero recently that's another soul bound a third soul bound but yeah that's pretty much it I haven't uh with the holidays coming up, it's a tough time. Tough time to be playing video games, man. Oh, yeah. Tough time to be saving money. Yeah, tough time to be saving money <laughs> as well. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get into the headliners here. So this is where we're going to go ahead and read off a couple uh, news, article for, news articles for you guys uh, before we get into the actual topic of the show. Uh, and we only have three things this week, well, actually, uh, before short week. before you, before we go on with this, I wanted to go over housekeeping for the channel. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what's up? So, right now, I'm in the debate of whether I want to continue making the um the video game videos, and I, I know we have uh, a new subscriber, and I know a couple people watch them. Um, I'm not for sure if they're watching those video game videos or, if it's, or even the podcast uh, I, I know right now kind of like the videos that get the most views right now are is the D&D &D videos so um, I'm just wondering because it, it takes the most effort right now to edit um, 
those video game videos. So I'm just wondering, and it also kind of is tough getting us all together to do them, but yeah, and be somewhat entertaining. Sometimes we just, I feel like we've recorded some stuff before and we're just kind of talking, <laughs> not really, yeah, not really and, doing a whole lot or and just drinking or hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe it's just tough during the holiday seasons when you're so busy and you're trying to edit videos and stuff, but. I don't know. I, I yeah. if 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 I hear otherwise from anybody, um, I'll continue doing them. But I don't I don't know, man. I'm I'm, I'm on the fence right now. But um, yeah, it might be like a rare occasion for now. I, like we all actually do get together and everyone's on, and maybe we'll record something. But for right now, I guess we're putting a pause on it. But besides that, obviously we plan to keep the podcast and D and D going. So we'll we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll we'll stop doing the video game videos and and wait and maybe um kind of have them evolve maybe. into something different yeah maybe we'll become a tabletop channel you never oh, know shoot. <laughs> well, which would be awesome because there's I, I love playing board games uh like there's this one that that me and my friends play a lot called betrayal at house on the hill uh which oh i play that one as well i love it oh you so great. one of my <laughs> i just recently got the expansion for it and, uh, oh, so did we! Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, because we different friend groups for everyone out there, so that's why it's so baffling for everyone that's like I'm obviously so you guys are you playing guys together, have but so many friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like we played through just about every uh, haunt, and uh, one of my bu- one of my buddies got uh, the Legacy Edition, and we're super interested and excited to play that. So but. yeah, I'm huge into board games as well. Uh, it actually used to be my job a little bit ago, back in college days, uh, to pretty much like manage the board game section of this uh, like kind of retro gaming store thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, just. Uh, that used to be my job. So, yeah, it's a ton of fun, and uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll become a tabletop channel if everyone likes D and D so much. Dun, wouldn't dun, you love dun. that, Rob? Uh, I wouldn't mind it actually. <laughs> um, I was actually talking with Sam about maybe once we're done with this campaign, however long it takes. Um, maybe doing a Star Wars campaign, and either That'd be me cool. and Sam could DM, me or Sam. Yeah. Well, also, if you guys ever want to take a break, or if we have a huge backlog of videos, or we do a session that's so long that it's going to take, like, a you know whole month to get out there, if you guys ever want to DM, or if you want me to DM something, we could always do a one-shot, or even a two- or three-shot, or something, you know, just like a short little something in between this campaign because i know everyone doesn't want to just do this only for a super long time every single friday you know what mm-hmm. i mean so we could always do that too um but yeah so we're keeping keeping all of our options open here but now back into the headliners here we have three news articles again short week uh yeah and like rob said it's you know holiday times work is uh starting to get a little hectic so uh it's probably going to be a short shorter podcast today but we'll get into it here number one is warcraft 3 reforged releases on january 28th 2020 and i know that doesn't mean a whole lot to a lot of people but rob i know your brother likes the game and i used to play the fuck out of warcraft 3 man like it is one of the best rts's out there i'd put it above age of empires even and that's saying a lot like, Warcraft 3 is fucking amazing. So, hopefully it comes out. Hopefully it has all the mods and everything. Uh, did you either of you guys ever really get into Warcraft or even World of Warcraft or anything related? Uh, not really. Uh, I think I played a little bit of um, Warcraft 3 with, like, mods, like a bunch of tower defenses and stuff like that when I was a kid. But aside from that, nothing. Yeah, me neither. What about you, Jesse? Um... Because back in the day when I think Warcraft and World of Warcraft were big, um, I didn't have a very good computer, and what I did play mm-hmm. on it was RuneScape pretty much, so... Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there is that, and we have an official release date, January 28th, 2020, so... Uh, a lot sooner than I feel like a lot of people thought, so that's really awesome. Uh, especially with that Blizzard's going back and doing like old stuff again, like bringing back WoW Classic. Now they're giving us Warcraft 3 Reforged. So hats off to you, Blizzard, even though you guys uh, don't like Hong Kong <laughs> and all that shit. But <laughs> they hate them. Yep. Number two, 
Modern Warfare will show you your kill death ratio for twenty dollars. This comes from Kotaku uh, by S. E. Doster. What a value! Yeah, what a value. Uh, quote that upset has. Oh shit! Yeah, that upset has grown now that the cause. Medic store for December's Season 1 content drop features a watch that tracks the player's kills and deaths. The Time to Die watch is found within the Mother Russia bundle. That's a weird bundle name. <laughs> uh, which is a 10-piece cosmetic collection priced at 2,000 COD points or $20. So for you to see your kill-death ratio, I mean, does, is there not a... Like, Jesse, you've played Is there not a stats page like there usually is? Or... Yeah. Are you are you able to see your deaths and kills like for each match, and you could probably just write them down? Or something. I mean, I don't know. Twenty bucks is that's that's weird to, yeah, to so, show kill death ratio. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so if you're in the middle of the game, uh, it doesn't show your deaths, but it'll show your kills, your assists, uh, and I believe your score. Uh, and it doesn't show you your actual deaths until the game has ended. Um, oh. Yeah. So I don't I don't know why they they went that route, but. Funny. You can see uh, your overall, like, you know, mm -hmm. kill-death ratio and, you know, match-specific stuff uh, on the website, on the companion app, and even uh, a lot of that stuff uh, in-game. You'll just have to go to, the you know, your service record or whatever it's called on here. Yeah, if it's like in the status in the status page, I can't see myself paying twenty dollars to. I guess like for the people that like want it mid game session to like motivate them or something. But for the most part, I just want to see it in my status page and like brag about it and show everyone. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like I don't know. Uh, that seems like a really, really, really weird cosmetic item, I guess. Yeah. So or thing. To me, that it doesn't really make sense for anybody other than like the die-hard COD fanboys, you know, who buy every single expansion, uh, every single skin, stuff like that, who are willing to sink hundreds and hundreds of dollars into the game. Fortunately, that's yeah. not me. So. <laughs> True. And number three. New Fallout 76 patch creates more problems by breaking legendary armor. Uh, this comes from Polygon Austin Goslin. Quote, Fallout 76's latest patch, Update 16, has only been out for a day, and some players have already found a major flaw. Reloading your weapon may cause legendary armor to break after the patch is installed, although this problem doesn't seem to happen every single time. Man, Fallout 76. Are you guys still planning on getting it one day or what? I mean, like, it's like every single patch they come out with. Like, how broken can this game be, man? Like, every patch, something else breaks, something else gets added, something else breaks. Like, what the fuck is even going on with this shit, man? It's broken. Um, yeah. I actually bought it for Xbox a long time ago. Uh, I bought it on Amazon. It was on sale for, like, $18. But um, other than that... I like I'll, I'll never buy it on PC. I still kind of want it. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask Rob, do you still want to like I guess give it a shot at some point? Uh yeah, I actually really do. <laughs> like like <laughs> I, I if I can get it for like I mean, I think I saw it for 15 bucks last time we talked about it. I'm if we can get it for 10 bucks, I'd pay 10 bucks to play it. I think I can get 10 bucks you of enjoyment bucks. out of it. If I go in, if I go in knowing it's broken, I bought it for 10 bucks and just yeah, even if I can get like five hours of enjoyment out of it, that's not bad. I guess that's true. Ten dollars is still a little steep for me, dude. I pay like <laughs> five bucks. Five dollars, I'm all in. I'll, I'll play some Fallout 76 just to dick around with you guys. Uh, but yeah, no, that's it. That game, so broken, man. Uh, it's unbelievable how this even fucking happened from Bethesda of all people. Like that was just that straight up downfall right there. Uh, it's huge, huge blow. It makes me a little worried about future games and yeah, it's... how well they're actually going to work. Not even just like, like I know the writing is going to be there. Are you know, you sure? Todd Howard's going to be directing them. And, freaking oh, that's writing true. was horrible <laughs> for, I shouldn't say horrible, but the writing was kind of like, was decent for Skyrim and it was just kind of like whatever for Fallout 4. So, Well, it, it kind of worries me for um, uh, Starfield because Starfield is, uh, it's going to be on the same engine, mm -hmm. and I don't know, just how they're handling Fallout 76, I just, I don't have a whole lot of faith for, for Bethesda. 
Yeah, I feel you. And I really, really hate that creation engine, man. That, like, uh, where everyone just kind of walks around with, like, they look like they have a stick up their ass, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's so bad. Like, Fallout 4 used the creation engine. Uh, I mean, I guess all Bethesda games, or all the, like, those, like, Fallout and Elder Scrolls games. And I... You, you are right, Rob, actually, that Skyrim, I actually kind of didn't care for the story at all, compared to, like, Oblivion. Um, but I did like Fallout 4 somewhat, but yeah, you already knew Vegas was made by Obsidian, and that was way better, so I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it isn't a buggy mess like this, and yeah, Starfield using the creation engine still. Hopefully they get everything worked out, but uh, I don't know, man. But that's just kind of losing... Losing their uh, gusto. Don't matter, man. They're still going to sell millions. Yeah, pretty much anything Todd Howard puts out just fucking prints money. So, But that's all the news I have for this week. Uh, I think the biggest news really comes from what's our topic of the show, which comes from the Video Game Awards, which happened uh, last week, Thursday. Uh, and this is kind of where, you know, everything that happened there was probably the biggest news to happen this week so we'll go ahead and delve deep into it uh with a, a little little recap here of the winners so first things first is game of the year which everyone's probably wondering about uh did you guys watch it by the way no i didn't before i get into it no i didn't either. you didn't what all right well i sat through and i watched the whole damn thing i'm sorry so i think uh <laughs> It wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. I actually was pretty excited about a lot of the announcements, uh, but I'll get into a little more disappointing stuff later. But Game of the Year, so f right off the rip, Game of the Year was given to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which is pretty crazy considering the lineup, man. Like, that is... That's weird. I don't know. I, I feel like... I know, Rob, you said you didn't really care for Sekiro. I actually had a friend of mine who platinumed the game on PlayStation. Uh, I had another friend that hates Dark Souls game and he play uh, hates Dark Souls games, and he played it. So, uh, But then I also know people that have played Dark Souls and stuff and didn't like it, like you, Rob. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's weird. I haven't even tried it. I've literally never even touched the game yet. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I like it or not, but for it to win Game of the Year, that was a huge, huge shock over Resident Evil 2, Control, Death Stranding, Super Smash Brothers, a fucking you know, Nintendo always wins shit. Uh, the Outer Worlds, like, I don't really think deserve to really be up there, but uh, <laughs> all that, that that's a huge, huge lineup. And Sekiro Shadows Die Twice ends up taking it home, man. That's kind of uh, kind of crazy. Surprising. What do you guys think? Yeah, definitely, definitely surprising. Uh, some notable mentions, best action game went to Devil May Cry 5, uh, best action slash adventure game went also to Sekiro, uh, and then art direction was Control, uh, and everything else is just kind of like audio design and esports stuff and um, stuff like that, indie games. Uh, well, oh, one of the biggest surprises to me actually was uh, the fighting game like best fighting game and Super Smash Bros won that which I think it Mortal Kombat 11 definitely definitely deserved because uh, that game is fantastic if we talked about more about that last last week but uh, yeah that's uh, definitely surprising Sekiro man I gotta I gotta try it now now I definitely have to try it. I was gonna pass on it and just be like yeah whatever you know it's up for game of the year but if it's you know whatever but now that one game of the year, I'm just kind of like, damn, that many people really, really fucking like this game? I might have to give it a shot. What about you, Jesse? You ever played Dark Souls or any of these uh, Soulsborne games? Um, Yeah, the only one I've ever played was the first Dark Souls. Um, it's not my cup of tea, you know. Uh, That's fair. So, uh, needless to say, I've never touched uh, or even had the, the will to play uh, Sekiro. I've heard it was really good, so. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I would say that this would have a step up over some like Dark Souls is from what I hear, this game actually has like a definitive narrative that you don't have to like go searching for, you know what I mean? Like it actually has like the cutscenes and like people talking to each other. <laughs> Unlike Dark Souls where I feel like everything's like so, uh, the story's kind of disconnected, you have to like piece it all together, which is fun in its own right. Um, which is one of the reasons I like Dark Souls is actually finding out the lore and stuff. Uh, but with Sekiro, it's like more of a streamlined, like, hey, this is the story. And I think I'd 
I think it, that would be pretty well, cool, too. Now so. that, you know what's funny? Uh, after playing Star Wars, uh, Andrew's been telling me to go back and try Sekiro because it's similar gameplay. You know, you're parrying, and and um, mm-hmm. it, it, they got inspired by Sekiro with the parrying mechanic and all that stuff. So I wonder if going back to... I wonder if I, I can get into it now, now that I've kind of gotten used to the gameplay through playing Star Wars true. or the, that type of game. Yeah, definitely. Um and if you go back to it, let me know, because, again, I, I need to get my hands on this game and, and actually give it a shot. By the way, we never went through um, Dark Souls 3's last DLC. I know, we have that final DLC left. You, you just quit on me. I don't even know I don't even know what the DLC is. Like, do I even own it? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, I think I've been buying I a period. So. I don't even know if I've owned it, but... Uh, yeah, Dark Souls 3 is a lot of fun. Um, certainly not my favorite, though. I tried to play a tanky person in Dark Souls 3 and it didn't quite work out for me. Uh, he's sword and board type. But, oh well. A couple things I did want to get into for the Video Game Awards. And these are like the huge, huge, huge announcements. Uh, number one, first and foremost, is uh, Xbox unveiled their next generation console at the Video Game Awards. Who would have thought... Uh, so we actually got to see some of it. We even seen some, uh, like, a little bit of uh, gameplay and uh, just how graphics will look for next gen with certain trailers. You know, I never really truly trust trailers. No, I don't trust uh, any especially of that crap. cinematic ones. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know exactly how it's going to look, but uh, it was a pretty sick trailer. Uh, and the Xbox looks weird. It looks like a computer. Have you guys seen the pictures of it yeah, at all? Or? It looks like a cube, not a cube, but like a like a rectangle, rectangle like box. Thing. But it's kinda like, like a micro <laughs> but it's kind of it's it's too it's too small yeah. to be a PC tower. Yeah, uh, I mean it, it's it it looks pretty good. I'm still probably just gonna stick to PC and let those exclusives roll in on PC and then you know get a PS5 or whatever, but. It's pretty exciting, and uh, technically, I did read this that it's t- the next Xbox is technically just called the Xbox, but yeah. this the one that they showed is the Series X version of that. So they're gonna come out with all kinds of different versions, just like PS4, PS4 Pro, or the Xbox Slim uh, type shit. Uh, so that the one that they actually showed was the Series X, but this Xbox is actually called. Xbox, which I feel like is really fucking confusing. <laughs> just to go from Xbox to Xbox 360, Xbox One, and then now you're back to just Xbox. Yeah, who knows what the heck they're thinking. Yeah. Why don't uh, they just call it, start calling it the Xbox thinking. 4? Just, just call it the Xbox... Well, what is this? Yeah, it would be the Xbox 4, right? So, yeah, it would just be, call it the yeah. Xbox 4. People are not going to call yeah, it... People just, just keep it. on calling it... X- hey, do you got the Xbox? You got, you got an Xbox? Yeah, it really makes no sense. Um... But, you know, a bunch of marketing people behind it. I'm sure they knew, they know what they're doing, but it's, it's weird. Uh, but speaking of super weird, uh, we got uh, a trailer for a game at Bravely Default 2. Did you guys ever play the original Bravely Default? I did. Um, I really like Bravely Default. I never got a chance to play Bravely Second. But it's funny because a lot of people are like, what the heck? Bravely Default 2? Like, when there's already a Bravely Second? That's what I was just about to get into was... We got a trailer for Bravely Default 2, even though Bravely Second exists. Like, what? Square Enix, what are you doing? You guys drunk at the wheel? Well, the you, you say that, but Xbox is called, <laughs> the new Xbox is called the Xbox. Yeah, that's what, exactly. I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Have not seen modern movie naming <laughs> schemes? Too fast. <laughs> yeah, Fast Five, Furious Seven. At least those had numbers in them, but now we're getting, I guess, just Fast and Furious and who knows. But yeah, that's very, very strange. Uh, another piece of exciting news is that we got a uh, PS5 launch title uh, called Godfall, made by... Uh, I know at least they have a part in it, is uh, Gearbox, the people who make... Um, what am I blanking? Borderlands. <laughs> the people who make Borderlands, uh, and then a, a new studio, Counterplay Games, that I've never heard of. But... Uh, and they're making Godfall, and they call it, instead of a looter shooter, they're calling this a looter slasher. Th- and it's from what I could tell, it seems like it's pretty much like Borderlands, but it has like a whole 
you know, obviously it has nothing to do with Borderlands and the art style is totally they different, made this but game like, like gameplay. It was called Too Human, and everyone hated it. <laughs> oh shit! Did that have? Uh, did I remember Too Human actually? Did they? Did that have co-op? Yeah, because this is actually gonna have. Yeah, Too Human had co-op. Oh man, I I I remember playing that on Xbox 360, and it'd be very bad. So yeah, <laughs> I'm sure this will be much better. I I mean I hope. <laughs> I don't know any of these games that you guys are talking about. Uh, here's a little uh. I'll link actually some to you, and you can watch that while I'm talking about it. Or at least go to the website, you don't have to watch the trailer, because the trailers, again, one of the things I will keep complaining about is these fucking cinematic trailers, man. Every single trailer is pretty much cinematic, so uh, they're almost not even worth watching until you get gameplay, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, you can look, you know, scroll down on their website. And uh, yeah, so if they're, they're saying it's going to be like a third-person melee action game. Uh, it's going to be a looter shooter, so you're going to get all kinds of different weapons. And if Gearbox has their hands on it, I think it'd be pretty cool if there was, like, random swords that you could get. Kind of like the random guns that you get, you know? Like, randomly generated ones uh, from Borderlands. And then, yeah, of course, you know, three-player co-op and all that stuff is going to be pretty sick. And, uh, yeah, that's that, that's our very look at a, or our first look at a launch title for PS5, which is crazy that they're just, like, I mean, the, you don't think that you would just see trailers like this at the Game Awards, uh, like for brand new consoles, or even announce a whole new console at a Game Awards. That's kind of E3 type shit, but here we are. Another piece of uh, pretty crazy news is uh, Wolf Among Us 2 is coming out. They showed a trailer for that, even after Tell Telltale announced that they were canceling the game after the studio closed down. If you guys remember Telltale's uh, shitty departure... Yeah, uh, how I they do. fired people and then just shut down the the company pretty much. Yep, uh, and they said, hey, we're no longer working on Wolf Among Us 2, that's pretty much gone. And then, uh, what do you know, it back. So, uh, did you guys ever play Wolf Among Us at all? Uh, no, the only Telltale games that I've ever played was uh, uh, the Game of Thrones one. Mm-hmm. That was actually pretty good. I played the first couple, first three yeah, I episodes. Liked, yeah, I liked the Game of Thrones one. I thought it was really, really By the good way, too. I did beat the Wolf Among Us one. Yeah, yeah. So did you like I it? I did. I, I thought it was really good. Um, the first episode left off with a bang. Um, that was really interesting. And it had a really interesting mm -hmm. world. I, I'm just curious how they're going to do it because the Wolf Among Us is... The first one was a it's, it's a comic book series, and the first one was a prequel. So I mean, there was only so much they could you know do with it, I suppose. But like, is this yeah. gonna be a sequel to the prequel, so it's still before the comic books, or is this gonna be like a alternate reality type thing where it doesn't follow the comics canon? How does it? How's it? What's it gonna do? I didn't even think of that. I also uh, beat the first Wolf Among Us as well, and I didn't even think, yeah, is this gonna go? I I don't know. Dun, that that dun, is kind dun. of confusing how they how they're gonna do that. Maybe they are gonna actually try to follow the comics, but how do you follow the comics on a choice base? I don't know. That that's gonna be weird. But uh, I'm still pretty excited because I thought Wolf Among Us was one of their better one of their better well, games. People, for sure. it's kind of surprising because the Telltale stuff they actually came out with some good stuff. Like um, uh, yeah, I actually like Batman as Borderlands. well. Borderlands. People really like the Borderlands one. Mm -hmm. Tales of Borderlands. Yeah, that was actually one of the ones I did not like. Oh. <laughs> I got, like, halfway through it, and I hated it. But I do know that, like, everyone else was telling me to play it. Hey, you need to play the, you know, Tales from the Borderlands. But I'm, I'm not a big fan of Borderlands, and I don't even like the lore. So I was like, eh. <laughs> I'm not a huge Borderlands fan either, so. I'm, yeah, I'm not so. a fan at all, actually. <laughs> but hey, maybe uh, with this news, we'll get that Game of Thrones Season 2 as well in the future. We could only hope. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll get a Telltale version uh, of the final season, and it'll be better. They'll change yeah. it. We can make <laughs> the whole final make, season of make Game our of own Jones. choices. That actually wouldn't Dude, be a would bad be, idea. Redo, really awesome. redo the final seasons with uh, Telltale games. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Dude, we just became millionaires. Boom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have here? Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which looks the awesome. graphics look insane uh, for these for this game. Yeah. And, the only thing, and the, and the gameplay looks fun, but the only thing is, I mean, I just don't know how it's going to stay interesting if you're just 
samurai sorting regular dudes you know what i mean i'm so used to playing like dark souls these all these these kind of adventure games where you're fighting monsters and sci-fi creatures and stuff and this is just like yeah you're just fighting some dudes i think that's what i'm kind of excited about a little bit um i'm kind of excited about that a little bit just kind of like uh kind of like grand theft auto you know you're not doing anything too otherworldly uh but you are right. There is a, a, an element of like, you know, this dude is just like another heavily armored guy. This dude's another heavily armored guy. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. I, uh, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely excited for it. I, I'm a little skeptical because I don't really understand. I don't know why they pushing this game out when, and it's, it's Sucker Punch. So like they are like known for a lot of their like PS4 exclusives. Um, I mean, infamous to name the most prevalent one. Uh, so why are they coming out with like a PS4 game? Like, I feel like they, this should be a PS5 game, right? Like, it's coming out. Uh, I have the release date here. For, they said summer 2020. So you're gonna play this for like two, three months, and then you're already getting a PS5. Nope. And who knows that you know they haven't really announced what backwards compatibility is coming with. Uh, PS4. The Xbox Series X though is going to be, they said they did say it's uh, backwards compatible at launch with all your Xbox One games and Xbox 360 games and Xbox games. So uh, I don't know. PS5 hopefully follows suit, but yeah, it's just weird. Like like a couple of well, months before I bet the new you, console I release. I bet you they're showing the PS5 version, and then when you play the P, when the PS4 version comes out, they're going to be like, oh yeah, it doesn't look as good. Typical stuff. And the PS5 comes out and they go, no, this is the real version. Huh? You know, I would hate that, but you're probably right. Just like they, they they did that with the PS4 Pro shit, and same with Xbox with the Xbox One X. They're always like, this is the Xbox One X version, and you know, they're not actually showing the original stuff. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, uh, I think it's a weird release. I would hold off on it if I was them, but I don't I don't know. Well, the the bigger the install base, industry, they release it on uh, as a as a as a like exclusive for the PS5. Then you won't sell as many games because there's only going to be so many consoles out there. I would think so, but I, I, I would imagine, uh, Infamous Second Son was their previous game, and that was a PS4 launch title as well. So, and that I feel like that did pretty well, at least like reviews and stuff. I don't know how much it sold, but um, maybe they're not confident that, that was this a one's going to so. move consoles. Maybe it's a little weird. Uh, another piece of news. Uh, I'm not really going in order here. Uh, is uh, Hellblade 2, uh, the sequel to Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which is a phenomenal game. Got the platinum trophy on PS4 uh, for this game because it is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is amazing, uh, and the fact that we're getting a second one is gonna be crazy. So. I hope it's hope it's pretty good, but again, it was just a cinematic trailer, so nothing. Uh, what didn't really show off a whole lot besides just kind of an announcement. Uh, but yeah, they're really cool. Did you guys ever play Senua's Sacrifice at all? Not really. Yeah, I never heard of it until uh, until they announced the second one. Damn, I, I might have. Really? I played a little bit of it, but I I don't know. I couldn't get into it. I felt like I was playing a yeah. PS2 game. Like design, design. Really, wise, I thought the graphics wise. were amazing. Oh, design wise, I, I could see that. But then again, it was only like thirty, forty bucks or something like that. It wasn't like a full price, like sixty dollar game. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be one to look out for for sure. Uh, next we have the Humankind trailer, which I know Rob, you're super stoked about, and uh, that's coming out twenty twenty, officially announced, and it looks like you actually get to create your own leader this time instead of picking yep. a random one, which. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. So yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be really sick. You psyched about that, Rob? I, I'm I'm pretty pumped about it. I'm just right now. It's like it's the type of game where trailers don't really get you hyped because it's <laughs> it's not exactly like the most action-packed game. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting till it comes out to to see. I think the the biggest thing I want to know about it, and and maybe this information's out there. I just haven't looked. Is how does how are the cities gonna function? Because that's a big deal because part of the problem that Civ has and the reason why Civ 5 is my favorite is because 
like some when you start getting to a certain point in the game you have too many cities and it just becomes a chore to have to every turn every turn just start picking something for it to build um yeah and civ 5 kind of mitigated that because you could only have so many cities because you had a happiness factor you had to um that you had to pay attention to and each city you built affected brought yeah, down your happiness life. so <laughs> well i thought it was great because it it, allowed, it made it to where people couldn't just spam cities and so it made your turn yeah that, that that is true yeah. and then uh the, those barbarians though, what man. instead of five or six uh six yeah well th you that that's just uh at first i hated it but once you like i kind of like it now because you you just have to learn how to play to it so you just have to you just have to focus a lot more on military at the beginning and protecting your lands and stuff once you do that it kind of seems a little bit more natural so gotcha uh what do you think about like creating your own character instead of picking a leader doesn't that get rid of like somewhat of a strategy element of like hey i'm america so i know i need like this this and this or i'm like good at this this and this like now you make your own dude so i guess we all start off on even playing fields would you assume? so what what happens is is that you have um it, it goes by eras so you pick a civilization from the ancient era and um each era you choose a new civilization because basically what they're talking about is that and, the, and so instead of yeah so that so you kind of make your own leader then you 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 your people go by each civilization so basically um how do i explain this the the idea is that civilizations never stay the same you know what i mean like like we're gonna be okay. like we were a different country 200 years ago type thing and and you know rome and italy and stuff like that were way different a thousand years ago so it's like each era you pick a different civ and it adds to your pluses and minuses and it all just depends adds to to all the extras that you get it all just depends on which way you're you're playing the game as you go through because you might have started out in, in a situation where like certain resources around you benefit you to go a certain way or you know certain things like that or whether you're in a war okay. and you're like you know need to become more warring yeah more aggressive yeah so you go more aggressive instead of aggressive. something else yeah that's my understanding of how they're doing the civilization instead of just picking one from the beginning and sticking with it. Well, that's really cool. That's definitely like innovative, especially uh, since this game kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, I, I like you told me about it one day, and I was just like, "What in the <laughs> world is this?" Like, it literally looks exactly like Civ. The, too. the combat is way uh, different. Yeah, yeah. I saw a little bit of the combat, and that's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. And hopefully, we get into that. Like we got into Civ and, Five. And for the, so that's gonna be a for blast. the people who don't know the combat. Unlike Civ, which is kind of like you know you, you just have it's kind of turn based, and you kind of well this is turn based too. But you're kind of like on your on this tabletop grid, and you're just kind of ramming them into each other. Um, this one, when you when your two units fight, it props you down into a uh, it zooms you down into a battlefield, and it turns into kind of XCOM style a little bit, and you move your people around, and um, and attack that way using strategy uh, on a smaller battlefield, and I think you have like nine turns, and if you the game ends in nine turns, then you know whoever's that's the damage that was taken essentially, you know it's a yeah. So I wonder how that looks if only two people are at war. And everyone else is like waiting on them. You know, like, do we all watch them do it, or I wonder how that's well, going to work out? Well, I know when you play Civ online, everyone takes their turns at the same time. But if they're the last two people, I guess you would watch, or they give you the option to watch. Yeah. Yeah, it's de it de definitely looks. Cool yeah, you're you're right. Sure. I wonder how that would extend out the length of the game and how that's going to play a factor. Yeah, because like if someone's taking forever to like, you know finish out a battle and you're just like sitting here waiting for your next turn all you're doing they is probably build, they probably like, got to be time like something. you have like you have like 10 seconds to make your turn or something or 15 seconds that would be really cool yeah call it, it's like That'd speed chess really cool. yeah that's what i was thinking <laughs> that way it's a lot easier to mess up <laughs> yep uh and then lastly uh and there was a bunch of stuff announced, but these are just the things that like I care about <laughs> since I wrote the list. Uh, but No More Heroes three was announced, which is amazing. No More Heroes one and two are like my favorite Wii I, I games. I never played them. The only reason they I really own that interesting. Wii. Damn man, they are fucking good, man. Like I again, that was like the only reason I had a Wii around, and uh, they were really, really good. But there was a lot, lot, lot of cinematic trailers and. Uh, 
that is what was disappointing to me. Uh, like, like they were saying, oh, we're gonna have like so many trailers and all this, you know, new game announcements. Well, I was kind of hoping for a little more gameplay, man. There were so many cinematic trailers. Um, but even with the cinematic trailers, uh, I have one last question for you guys for the topic. Uh, do you think that the these kind of like award shows or even like PSX, uh, like a year or two ago, um because I know they didn't do PSX this year, but I think they had PSX last year or whatever, like PlayStation Experience or whatever. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's killing main shows like E3? Uh, because I feel like, yeah, you know, why would Xbox announce this shit here instead of E3? You know what I mean? And then we also have Tokyo Game Show. We have PAX. We have all these conventions well, and these awards. And do you think that's like killing off like these these bigger shows like E3 or? I th- I think, think I don't think it's killing them off. I I do think it is doing damage. Um, I I feel like there was a lot more because I feel I, like right now off the top of my head I can really only think of um. Tokyo Game Show, E3, and PAX. Do they? Yeah, I guess. Right. Do they? Do they announce stuff at PAX? Yeah, they they usually yeah they announce stuff at PAX. Oh, okay. Gamescom, right? Isn't that one? Gamescom. We also have BlizzCon. Well, BlizzCon is basically yeah, definitely Gamescom. Blizzard's one. own like PlayStation. It's Blizzard's own like. Do you think more companies would do yeah. that? Do you think they're just gonna like, uh, like go off oh, yeah. and just like have their own conferences like like Bethesda Con or something <laughs> and just like announce stuff there, just do away with E3 and like only have the true fans, you know? Um, uh, I think definitely something weird. You make a good point, because I, I, I forgot E3 has their own, like, you know, Activision section, Bethesda section, EA section. Yeah, um, yeah I don't think that's hurting them at all. I, th- I think that these other ones, I, I think it's fine. There's, there's a lot of stuff that comes out in the year. It's not like it's not like there's only three or four times where they announce stuff. It's a lot of games that come out and a lot of stuff to announce, so... And sometimes it's not even announcing stuff. It's just showing stuff off again, you know, showing a new trailer. Um, showing some gameplay yeah, that hasn't been shown. That's true. So, I mean, the, you know, you can announce something at, at E3, show gameplay at this one, announce a release date at this one, you know, like, a lot of stuff. There's there's, there's just there's a lot to, to show off. I think we're good. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about it, Jesse? Um, I don't know. I think E3 is definitely on the decline, but most major... Uh, console developers are moving towards having their own because uh, I think uh, yeah because Nintendo has their own Nintendo Direct stuff um, yeah they didn't even have a press conference or anything this year exactly and then I think neither did Sony yeah, Sony dropped out too and then I think this year was the first year that uh, Microsoft did was it the XO or whatever was that like their own the Xbox, uh, yeah, that like London thing or whatever that we talked about like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so I think they're probably gonna just start. Um, they're probably just gonna start doing their own things, and as far as like other major developers and stuff for for games, I think they're probably just gonna go to whichever uh, conference you know relates to whoever's putting the most money in their pockets. For example, how like. Uh, what is it? Call of Duty or Activision gets money on Xbox to have their DLC first. I think you yeah, know, Activision will show Call of Duty uh, at the Xbox conference, and I think it'll eventually go to that. But yeah, I uh, I definitely agree with that. I think uh, E three is definitely on the decline. All these companies, they probably make a lot of money selling tickets and like having their own conferences like, again, like the Xbox experience or the PlayStation experience or whatever. Um, another thing that, that, that I seem to just have a problem with is I think I have an issue with like, and I feel like I see this all the time where they're just announcing games too early. They're either announcing games too early or we see 15 trailers for the same game. Like, Man, I was going through the even like the Last of Us 2 trailers the other day, which don't get me wrong, I'm like super excited, but there's a bunch of them, you know. And I think Spider-Man was like one of the worst perpetrators of this. I remember I'm a huge huge Spider-Man fan. It's like my favorite Marvel hero, and I remember literally being like, dude, I don't want to see another fucking Spider-Man trailer. Like I just want the game in my hands now, you know what I mean? What do you guys think about like them showing trailers off either too much or too early uh or both? What do you think about that, Rob? Um, 
I, I mean, I, th I, I agree. I think there should be a freaking limit. Like, there should be... If you're going to announce a game, it should come out within 12 months. Like, uh, at, at the latest. And I appreciate it when they announce something and say, hey, it's coming out, you know, like... Like, if they announce something now, they're like, oh, it's coming out in April. You know, like, that's... Yeah. That's reasonable to me. Uh, when you have something like Star, was it Starfield? Is that what it is? Where yeah, they announced Starfield, it? They literally and, just showed like yeah, a little... they just showed. They did the same <laughs> thing with um, Oblivion Hammerfall or Oblivion Hammerfall, Elder Scrolls Hammerfall. <laughs> Oblivion Hammerfall. Um, <laughs> Oblivion Hammerfall. Yeah. Um, they announced it, and it was just like a literally it was nothing. They just said, "Yep, it's coming." Yeah. Uh, probably like six years from it's now. It's coming. Honestly, yep. I'm surprised uh, Title screen. more companies don't do what Bethesda did with Fallout 4 and announce it and hey and be like, hey, this is coming out in six months. Uh, because that's that built a crazy amount of hype for Fallout 4. and That's one of the reasons why yeah. Fallout 4 was such a success, I believe, is just because they didn't you know, really allow or give enough time for hype to die down. So... No, I totally agree. I really like what they did with that, um, where they were just kind of like, hey, by the way, Fallout 4 is coming out in like a couple of months. <laughs> uh, I feel like that that would definitely instill a lot of hype, especially like uh, I always liked it whenever like an E3 or even something like a video game award show, they're just like, hey, uh, by the way, this is available now. You know what I mean? Like that was always super hype. So I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of just trailers of people saying, hey, this stuff is coming. Eventually, next consoles, we'll see it. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, I just want that shit in my hands now. Yeah. So, just wanted to get you guys' opinion on that. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the new releases, Rob. So, you got the uh, the link? Yeah, so so with the new releases, there really isn't a whole lot coming out. I think most of this stuff is really just PC games finally releasing on the consoles. Um, and a lot of them are just yep. like indie games, um, smaller games. But there is one game on this yeah, list. Everything that was gonna come out is pretty much out. There's one game on this list I do want to mention. It's called Watam or Watam or however you pronounce it. It's by the makers of Katamari of Damacy, and um, mm -hmm. this game, <laughs> it's really weird. I don't even know how you describe it. It looks so <laughs> weird. I've never even you're, seen it. You like what these little this? characters. And I don't, I don't even know what the point of the game is, but I see them like holding hands <laughs> and doing like doing something. And the next thing you know, you're a different character, and you go and eat one of those other characters and like poop him out, and he becomes a poop character. Fuck? Um, what the fuck? <laughs> but it looks like the art style of like Katamari Damacy. You can tell it's like you know the same art designer. It, it's just crazy looking, and yeah. and like the description is that it's like this weird mysterious game. So. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I mean, that sounds that sounds pretty awesome. I can't wait to see what it's actually about because I do like me some Katamari. And, well, it's already so. out. So on PS4 and PC, so you could oh well, yeah, you could pick Shit. it up now. <laughs> it, it looks so weird. I don't even Damn. know. <laughs> um, but aside uh, from that, anything else on there? Uh, n nothing that looks like it's really nothing. worth mentioning, in my opinion. I don't really see. Uh, we got Warhammer yeah. Quest 2, The End of Times, coming out for Xbox One. Oh, but jeez. <laughs> that's already out on, like, PC and and phones. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what this is, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, and then Untitled Goose Game, I guess, is coming out to consoles. Yeah, that's coming to consoles. Uh, Demon Pit's coming to consoles. Or, I guess, I guess that was uh, Switch exclusive, and then I, th I think it did come out for PC as well. Yeah, it's been on PC for a little while uh, now. Um. Yeah, so now that's on on consoles, which I guess is pretty cool. I wonder if that has a platinum. If that's a if that has a platinum trophy, I bet that'd be super super fun. That probably. I wonder um, if. Yeah, I don't know. I. I'm 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 big on the trophies and stuff like that. Only for bragging rights with like me and my friends. I don't have a shit ton. You're like so some cool. people out there I see that have like a shit ton, but it's just like. Be like you when I grow It's up. just like me and. <laughs> I just have, like, enough to, to shit on my friends. And, uh, but yeah, so I, I wonder if, like, I'm actually going to look that up uh, real quick to see if it does have, like, a, a, a platinum trophy of some kind. Because I, I feel like that would be, and it does. Wow. Although it looks difficult. Jesus Christ, <laughs> 7 out of 10 difficulty. Holy shit. Maybe that won't be uh, as great as I thought. And but... then there's Demon Pit coming out yeah. for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. I believe this is already out on PC, and it's kind of a... I think it's a, it's kind of, it's an, it's an old, it plays like an old school, um, looks less like Doom and more like Quake, and 
I think it's like an arena type thing, like a like a firefight, you know, uh, horde mode type type game. So, but yeah, definitely looks like old school, like Doom or something. But outside of that, there's it's pretty slow week. Pretty slow week. Yeah. They need they need to announce everything that was going to come out. Their little shows, their internet shows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with that, we're going to go ahead and get to the final section of the show, the quick deals, so that way you guys can go ahead and immediately after this podcast, go ahead and get yourself some fucking games to play. Uh, and I don't have too much besides the fact that get fucking Game Pass, because even during the Game Awards, they were announcing all these games coming to Game Pass, and we have Witcher 3 coming, we have Mass Effect, and... Just a fuck ton of games, and then same with PlayStation Now, uh, Uncharted Zero Dawn, if you have not played that. Uh, I wasn't the too keen on it, but everyone seems to love it. Uh, uh, and then, of course, the uh, Uncharted DLC and Overcooked 2, which I feel like just came out not too long ago. Uh, so yeah, p- get get those subscription services, even though like I feel like we're all bogged down by subscription services these days. But uh, PlayStation Now, you know, you, could, you might be able to pass on, but Xbox Game Pass, you cannot. If you have a PC or an Xbox, you need Game Pass. Uh, there's just there's too much good value on that. I mean, Witcher 3, are you kidding me? You know what's me? funny? If you haven't played Witcher 3 yet, you I keep need to on telling it. Jesse he should get Game Pass, and he keeps telling me I can't afford it. I'm like, it's like five bucks a month. And he just bought fuck. He just, he yeah, just bought so Halo cheap. for 40 bucks. <laughs> Dude, you could have had that stuff for like 15 bucks a month or some shit. Like 10 bucks a month. Or, I don't even know what it I is. I think it's so. fine. I think Game Pass is five bucks a month. I don't think it's. Game Five, Pass right? for It's gotta PC. be more than that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, how much? <laughs> but also, Life is Strange is coming to uh, Game Pass. So if you or the newest Life is Strange, Life is Strange 2, Untitled Goose Game is coming to Game Pass. Uh, Pillars of Eternity. If you like uh, a Divinity Five Original a Sin or Original Sin 2, I mean, damn, that's crazy. I might do it for Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> you can still return. Yeah, Halo, Untitled Goose Game. Uh. Life is Strange 2, you got Pillars of Eternity, Witcher 3, man, if you haven't played Witcher 3, man, there's just too, too much, uh, Gears Tactics is coming out soon, even though I, we saw that trailer at uh, the Video Game Awards, but I don't really care too much for Gears Tactics, I think, I don't know, it seems like weird, uh, but yeah, man, it's just, it's too much, too, too much, and it's, it's everything, you know, it's worth the value for everything there. Is it so. worth the value? It's extremely worth the value. I mean, we're all here sitting here playing Reach, except for Jesse, because of Game Pass, so... Definitely, definitely have to get that. And with that, we'll go ahead and end the show. Bye-bye. Later. Bye-bye.